Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here are a couple of my worm bins that I plan on feeding today. These systems have now reached the age of 101 days in service, fed nine times so far. And the game plan for today is to give them feeding number 10. There was a little bit of a goof up last time, so before I get any further, let me just come up with some full disclosure here. <laughs> kind of a goof I made 12 days ago was coming back into these bins to feed them after having fed them only the day before. So they got fed 13 days ago, following kind of a normal schedule, and then it was actually those two stacked up bins over there that I had intended to feed 12 days ago, and then I accidentally turned around and picked these up when I had actually intended to feed the other two. So these two bins got fed two days in a row, and, you know, the, day, the first day they got pear, the next day they got some lettuce, and what else did they get? Potato peels, I think. So all those things are foods that I assume are probably by this time for the most part gone. And you know, since we kind of blew off their 100th day in service birthday, even though I thought I might wait a little bit longer on coming back to these bins to feed them, I'm going to get them taken care of today with some yummy melon rinds. Something that just happens to be in high... Um, <laughs> inventory right now in my freezer stuff I want to liquidate so perhaps that's my main motivation for coming down here to try to get rid of some of the stuff that's piling up so I'm gonna put a glove on get these systems up on the bench and we're gonna get them fed so now when we feed today my game plan for applying bedding was to just reuse a lot of the stuff that's already in here like these top covering newspapers as well as the feeding zone indicator because I've got replacement top covering newspapers and replacement feeding zone indicators on the ready so that when we're done feeding we're going to have those to place in here anew. So I mean we've got a full piece of newspaper here and I do believe under there is a piece of um, coffee filter. Those are all things that are going to be nicely seasoned bits of bedding that we can include along with the feeding. I've also got my prepared bedding on the ready right behind me in case we feel that that's not enough but I mean two feedings in a row that just happened during the last two check-ins that happened just a day apart last time we could have potentially sort of pushed these systems into a little bit of bedding overload although you know I don't even think that's even possible in a worm bin. <laughs> I believe it is common commonly understood and believed in the worm farming world that you can't really go too overboard with bedding. So I'll take that back <laughs> before people start correcting me because yeah that definitely is probably not possible. Certainly nothing to worry about if you feel like you've gone maybe a little bit overboard on giving your worms a whole bunch of bedding. But this type of bedding, all this stuff that's been sitting in the bin now for how long these pieces of newspaper might have been in here even prior to the previous feeding maybe those coffee filters came in new last time or maybe they've already been in the, the systems for some time all that stuff will be um, stuff that the worms can really just nibble right into along with the foods that they're getting and especially when we place all the yummy um, melon rinds on top of that stuff and the juices start spewing out of those melon rinds those pieces of paper with the melon juices soaking into them are going to become irresistible to the worms I believe but I am curious to see how we're doing as far as bedding goes beneath where we last fed we're not quite there yet where we last fed was down the middle of the bin but I thought we would sort of make our way there after first inspecting the outer edges of the systems to see how things are holding up as far as moisture and bedding and everything else go. A lot of my systems I've been gradually transitioning from plastic coverings to paper-based coverings and most of the systems that are older than these have already transitioned to no plastic covers. I believe there are just a couple bins that are a little bit older than these that still have plastic covers but all the other ones that are older have already 
gotten rid of their plastic covers. And even in those two bins that are a little bit older, you might have saw them earlier when we were looking at them over on the shelf, the two black bins just to the left of where these were positioned. The plastic covers were sort of pulled back from the edges to permit a little bit more airflow around the edges than normal. And I figured maybe it would be a determination that we can make after inspecting how things in here are doing as far as moisture content. If things felt a little bit too clumpy or muddy, it might be time to transition away from the plastic coverings or at least pl replace them onto the systems in a way similar to what we saw in those black bins, which is to just maybe focus the plastic covering around the center section of the system, leaving the outer edges uncovered so that a little bit of drying can start happening and a little bit of what's possibly excess moisture can exit the systems. And I think that's probably the way we're going to play it at this point is just to put the plastic coverings back on in such a way that they allow for a little bit more airflow than the way they were when we first pulled these up onto the bench. You saw that they were covering almost edge to edge all the way around. But we're probably going to benefit from a little bit of ventilation. Because if you think about what they're getting today, all this stuff, perhaps not so much the cantaloupe rinds, those aren't going to bring with them all that much moisture. A little bit, yeah, but not as much as the watermelon. The watermelon is going to bring with it a good bit of moisture. So now we're venturing down into the middle section of the systems where we had last fed. And you can see where we had already started um, piling in some of the older bits of paper that had been in here previously as the foundation for the feeding, similar to what we're going to be doing today. So before we plop in the foods, we're going to reuse all these old pieces of paper, as well as the old pieces of paper that we removed earlier that were resting out on the top surface. There is little pockets of the shredded paper and cardboard mix that I use as bedding floating around down in here still. Not surprising, and a good bit of moisture, I can even smell it, you know, that dampness, that smell of dampness. And I would hate to see things go into a point where they're just becoming muddy and nasty, so I think it will be a good idea to put the plastic coverings back on in such a way that we allow the systems to breathe, at least around the edges. That'll definitely be um, a benefit for these systems. So I'm not even sure we're going to really need much more bedding than what's already in here as well as the stuff we're going to put in that was out on the surface, those pieces of newspaper and those old feeding zone indicators. I don't know, we'll put this stuff in and then we'll, we'll reconsider whether or not we want to maybe grab a handful of my prepared bedding. It's right behind me. The container's already open, the lid is off, all I've got to do is reach behind me and grab it and then we can add a little bit of that too into here if we wish. Even here we could see a good bit of it, hardly even touched, because I think we were pretty generous with it last time. A couple handfuls went in at least. And as far as leftovers go, here and there I'm finding pockets of worms, possibly still working down some of the leftover bits of food that might still be floating around in here from the previous two feedings that were hap you know <laughs> were happening only two one day apart one after the other yeah look at that here we go I'm surprised we didn't find it in the other system maybe we just missed it but this is part of one of the pairs that they got 13 days ago and then 12 days ago we came back in with the lettuce and the I think it was lettuce or was it cabbage I can't remember somehow potato and lettuce ring a bell but I could be mistaken I mean we did play that video back really really fast <laughs> with me just voicing over because all the while I'm talking about how I'm surprised at how much progress these systems have made when I thought I was looking at two somewhat younger bins so all the dialogue was completely focused around what's really happening in those other two bins not what's really happening in here it was a very quickie short video 
definitely just kind of a almost a gag reel not really I mean it was fun fun to watch the the worm activity and fast playback and fast motion because the worms you know in real time speed the way we see them here their natural speed is just so slow watching the whole thing back in fast motion is interesting to see because the worms just move so much faster and you can really see all of them moving all right so we've still got a little bit more we can excavate over on this edge closer to me but we'll do that at the very end and we'll use that material as we excavate to cover up the feeding zone I think we're ready to start bringing in the um, the stuff we peeled off the top surface so let's grab all that first and bring it back in because that's going to include the old coffee filter slash feeding zone indicator as well as these top covering newspapers all stuff that I've got replacements for over here next to me and then the other bits of paper which we which we excavated which had already been down in the feeding zone with the food that they got last time. So that's a pretty nice foundation for today's feeding, but if we wanted to, I think we could easily give them maybe another handful of my prepared shredded paper cardboard leaf mix down into here. Because these are African night crawlers, a type of worm that really appreciates the um, the little injection, the little extra injection of very carbon rich food. So, you know, might, you might really see that as bedding, or a lot of people might see that as bedding, but these worms will see that as pretty much a food source, just like the kitchen scraps. So, I see no harm in coming back in here with just a little bit more of this stuff, even though there's plenty of it. Because, I'll just reiterate, you can never go wrong with too much bedding or what you think to be too much bedding because there is no such thing or maybe there is I don't know let me know what you think in the comments all right well, let's see get the um, get the food in here and then we can pretty much call it a day getting back to the normal routine with these worm bins versus having to recover from a, a foul up so now let's see three pieces of the red, two pieces of the yellow, let's make it four pieces of the red, and two pieces of the yellow. And you know what? It does seem like this stuff really seems to last. Because I keep pulling out large chunks of it that just haven't really broken down too much. But it's going to just keep stacking up if I don't give it to the worms, so let's just do that. Let's give it to the worms, and they can work that stuff down too. What I'm sprinkling in here on top is pulverized eggshell, which is what a lot of people use as um, bedding down in their worm bins. Not bedding, I'm sorry, grit. Grit is something that the worms, just like birds and other animals that have gizzards, they utilize that stuff down in their gizzards to help break down the foods that they're eating. So every now and then, it seems like a good idea to give them a little bit I don't really keep track of how much I give. Sometimes I include it with the feedings, sometimes I skip it. But in these systems that are relatively young, I mean, considering I've got some systems that are approaching 400 days of age and just finally getting wound down and completed, systems like these two that are just 101 days old seem like they've got a long ways to go. But is also the consideration of the grit that they need possibly not really being in the system in very abundant amounts so especially in my younger bins or relatively younger bins I like to be somewhat generous with this stuff so now we're just going to kind of continue on here doing a quick aeration and excavation of the edge closer to me Possibly breaking apart anything that appears to be a little bit too muddy or clumpy, although luckily I'm not really seeing anything that's like that. Everything seems to break apart pretty readily, although in certain spots I did sense that maybe there was a little bit more moisture than we need in here. And then there was also the, the extra consideration of the foods that I just added, which I believe are also going to bring with them some extra moisture. And I would hate to think that the 
food was just enough to push them over the edge from being still a nice crumbly loose um, batch of bedding for the worms to play around in into something that suddenly turned muddy due to me introducing excess moisture through the foods that I just given them so I think that putting on the uh, top coverings is going to be um, one possible way to prevent that from happening just putting on the plastic top coverings loosely allowing for a little bit of moisture to exit the bin and then yeah we're going to end up with some dry materials around the edges around the plastic which won't get a whole lot of worm traffic because of the dryness but that's okay we'll just live with that and eventually we might, we might even decide at some future check-in just to eliminate the plastic coverings and swap them out for paper or cardboard based coverings but for now I think we're in pretty good shape coming back in with a couple other dry items replacement feeding zone indicators which themselves might also absorb some moisture into themselves as well as these replacement top covering pieces of newspaper which will also quite likely absorb a little bit of moisture into themselves but not so much that it will create an uncomfortable space for the worms I don't think I think we're in pretty good shape here as far as putting these back on though with a little bit of space around the edges to permit airflow this is kind of the way they were put on and those other two bins that were right next to these on the shelf kind of pulled together away from the edges of the bin to allow for some airflow don't have to get too crazy in setting it up I think we would have even been fine if we had just placed them on the way we found them going edge to edge but I do think that I'm going to transition to possibly no plastic coverings in all my systems eventually since the hot humid summer does eventually get to the point where I feel like I'm virtually losing no moisture out of my systems and that they're pretty safe from getting too dry but on the flip side there's always that potential that all that humidity is going to also possibly cause the systems to get too wet which I don't want to see happen so that's it for our check-in now with our 101 day old African Nightcrawler systems getting feeding number 10 nice juicy assortment of melon rinds and a nice little boost to their bedding supply and even a little bit of grit to help with the breakdown of their foods all right everyone that's it for our check-in hopefully you enjoyed it if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go that's always really appreciated and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel that's really appreciated as well all right everyone have a great day thanks for watching bye now